excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. I was feeling a little under the weather this morning. I was like, you get out of bed right now because <laughs> the chicks are coming. And I'm so excited y'all are here. But two years ago, you changed your band name. Yeah. And, and it took me a minute, y'all, because I was like so used to it from childhood. Yeah. But then I, I heard that this was something that y'all kind of had in the making for a while, right? Yeah. What was, what was so important to you to change it to just the chicks? Well, I think just after George Floyd and all of that, we wanted to get rid of the Dixie part of our name for a long time, but it yeah. seemed like a huge thing to do. Um, so we would call, you know, our merch would say DCX, and we always referred to ourselves as the chicks. So it seemed like a really yeah. natural uh, change, and it seemed kind of seamless. Here's what was cool, is you, like, educated a lot of us as well, because I had no idea that it meant anything. So, like, I had to, like, go, I was like, wait, what? And I was like Googling and it was interesting to find out, you know, kind of the origin of that yeah, word I think we and did like it the that. Same. I always thought it was a region, like if it's what what direction of the Ma Mason, Mason Dixon. 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 Yeah, that's <laughs> me too. So it was like it was interesting though. I thought I thought that, that was that was a really cool to educate the public though on something, especially at such an important time. Yeah. So I thought it was really cool that y'all did that. And also it's just like easier to say. <laughs> so that's awesome. <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, but I love it. And, and then I think everybody would always say that too. Oh, did you see the chicks? Did you see the concert? Everybody right. would always call y'all that. Yeah. I think fa super fans like me. Um, so what do you each remember from like the very first time that y'all played together? Was it like awkward or like you knew right away it was gonna work? Well, Natalie had joined the band uh, a previous lineup, and so Marty and I were very like nervous. Like, well, she rehearsed all the songs and knew all the songs. And Natalie was just like, "Oh, I got this, y'all. I got this. She <laughs> had this confidence." And Marty and I are just like, "Oh my gosh, oh my gosh!" But Natalie brought this humongous pad with her lyrics on it, and we just flip it in between songs. We played these two clubs in, outside of Houston. Yeah, and I would just. <laughs> Next. Bend down, turn the page. <laughs> oh my God, do you have a problem with lyrics? I do. No, I, but I had to learn 22 songs in seven days. I would just nope. listen with headphones and, and learn walk to around. Yodel. Yodel. And I, yeah, I had never yodeled before. <laughs> That's a lot. I know. Oh my gosh. So the band, the, the band was famously, I had to be reminded of this, the band was famously boycotted on country radio 19 years ago, which feels like forever ago to me. Um, but it happened after, Natalie, you spoke out against um, the war in Iraq and the president in 2003, right? So what did you, I ended up, it was Shut Up and Sing, right? The documentary that came out, I yeah. loved that. <laughs> I think a lot of artists or anybody that's under a microscope, I, I'm jumping straight to that. I'm gonna ask the question, but I'm jumping straight to that because when you're under a microscope, everything you say, even if you don't mean something some way, or even if you, it's in a moment, everything gets blown at, good or bad. And it's a very hard way to live. And especially being in an industry, like I've been told to shut up and sing and not have an opinion. And it's, it's very hard, because you're a human, and we all count, you know, our thoughts and our hearts count. So how did, how did y'all deal with that? That had to be hard after watching that shut up and sing. That was hard not only on y'all, but the people around you, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm a fighter, so I didn't, I like, crumble. <laughs> I crumbled. That's a Texas well, woman. <laughs> I did crumble, like, after we won all the Grammys. I kind of fell apart after that. I think I was just, like, in this fight mode, and then it all sort of came crashing down. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of weight to carry. Yeah, Yeah, and it was for how it was affecting other people. I didn't care how it was affecting That's what I'm me, saying. Like, but, it, yeah. I'm so, so, I just can't believe I'm here. I remember, it's funny, I was having this moment we were talking about, because the first time we met, it was on Leno, I think. Yep. And, and we were both being interviewed, and I was like, I'm on the same couch with him. And then now you're like on my couch, I'm interviewing him, I'm just having a moment. <laughs> okay, um, so you're finally getting back out on the road. A lot of artists are being able to get back out on the road because of the pandemic, obviously people couldn't. So what are some cities that you're excited to play? Like, where are you like super stoked? Well, <laughs> Hartford, Connecticut. Are you? Won, yes. I love it. I love it. We have a lot of family in the Northeast. Oh, uh, I love that. I, we have a lot of Connecticut, Connecticut um, ties, connections. Yes, yes. I love that Connecticut connections. Yeah. I see what you did there. Got that out. Love her girl. <laughs> I know. Um, I always get excited. There are certain shows that I love playing. Yeah, if my family is there or just some audiences are amazing. Like New York is always an amazing you audience. You know, I, the state of Ohio. Is there, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I find? This is true. Any state that is hardcore sports ball, like if they're sports fans, like if you're like, man, Boston, that's a fun show to play. <laughs> like they love sport. They just, they're very passionate people. Yeah. So that's true. Ohio mm -hmm. is like that. Ohio. My executive producer's from there. She's gonna love that. <laughs> um, so the tour is for your album, Gaslighter. A lot of people relate to this album and the message and 
Um, and just, I guess from an artist's point of view, like how hard is it asking for a friend while I'm currently writing um, <laughs> through a similar situation is how hard is that to write so openly and so honest while navigating children, while navigating people, you know, you're under a microscope. Like there's so much, like I feel like I've written so many songs myself for my personal like life. And I keep kind of going, ooh, should I do that? Or, oh God, or is that, I, I did you go through that like while writing this? Um, I definitely wanted to be very blatant and like literal with this one, but um, yeah, I was still, I wasn't like beyond all the emotion like I am now. Uh, and then there's a the stress of, oh my gosh, now my kids are gonna hear this. And then yeah. now my son is on tour with us. He's in the band and I'm like, <laughs> this is kind of weird. <laughs> I'm always checking, are you okay? Are you all right? Oh my God, I know, because that could be awkward. Yeah. But I, but I love the fact that like, he's an artist, so he does get the fact that like, it's very therapeutic for us to like, that's our outlet. Like there's that's- There's no way around it. When you write falsely, it doesn't work. It's transparent you that you're full of be, crap. Yeah. yeah. You have to be real. Oh great, sorry, I was so blind. <laughs> it's weird, the more specific you are, the more it's universal to other people. Which, isn't that so mm -hmm. sad? Yeah, I know. I mean, life is so hard. Yeah, it's sad that people relate. Okay, so we all went through divorces, um, and how did you each find strength? And not just music, I think it's therapeutic, but like your female friendships, I feel like that has really helped me. Yeah, I remember your, when you first came down in the studio in Nashville and said, I'm, uh, guys, I just want to tell you I'm getting a divorce. Which time I, was this? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. The first one. <laughs> Number one. I remember thinking, well, I'm getting a divorce. Now she says she's getting a divorce. Now I can't say I'm getting a divorce. It was crap. But then oh, I yeah, but like, you saying told it. Oh, I had you were told y'all. I was no, keeping, I was feeling it. like everybody was going to judge me because I was like, I thought I was first you getting the divorce. You kept that in? Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, guys, I'm getting a divorce. And Mary's like, me? I'm having a horrible marriage. <laughs> like, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> well, it was great because I felt, because I didn't know anybody close to me that was getting a divorce. So it was, I was so happy for you. <laughs> we, we were divorce buddies. But it is, it is something to talk about because there is a level of like shame and like guilt yeah, and yeah. like, and people, especially from where we're from, like it's like you stick it out and it's like, um, oh, that's what I've been doing. You know, and I don't know if I can oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I can continue that for both of you. Like, it's like, right. obviously, <laughs> it's not working, you know, and, and people aren't happy, so it's a hard thing. I can't imagine holding that in. Like, I had to, like, finally, I mean, I can't imagine holding it in for a while, and then you finally say it, but the release of that is, is so monumental. I don't know, I felt like it was for me, did you? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. but I didn't have kids with that one, and she didn't either, and I think it's so much harder when you've got your babies. Yeah. It is, that's where the decision making sucks. Um, so what does it mean to have your kids performing with you on this tour? Cause that's pretty cool. It's awesome. Yeah. Slade's 21, he can play everything. And he's can drink legally. Fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and Marty's daughter's gonna play. She's 18. Violin. She plays, she plays piano and violin, but wow. she's gonna play violin, maybe try some accordion. Uh, but wow. I want to say Slade, Slade is just as good as anybody in the band. He, yeah, it's not a charity awesome. case. He's not throwing, <laughs> throwing a kid a bone. Like this, this kid is, he's yeah. amazing. So cool. What does that mean for you? Like just to have like your kids kind of doing what you do, like that influenced them. That's amazing. Makes me really proud and really happy because, you know, he made the decision not to go to college, so he's got a job. <laughs> <laughs> he's on his way. <laughs> it is, I always, people always ask me though about my kids, they're like, oh, can they sing? I'm like, well, yeah, but like, I'm not gonna push them this way. Like, cause sometimes this, I mean, you know that the industry can be very difficult and very hard. And so it's like, it's kind of a scary thing to be like, yes, it's very fun and creative and there's this awesome side of it, but there's also a lot of sacrifice and there's also a lot of just hardship that comes with it that people don't, we don't allow people to see because nobody wants to see that part, right? Yeah, but I think when you're as good as like Marty and Emily or Slade, like there's nothing, it's a no brainer. There's nothing else. That's what you're going to do. That is what you are meant to do. Yeah. He would be wasting time if that's not what he was going for. There's just nothing else that oh, he. Oh, I love that. The confidence into it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. That's so cool. I can't imagine like turning around a river or Remy being there playing with me.